and welcome to Call Your Damn Jets. Um, what I want to do today is um, go over uh, the nonsensical health rewards of my insurance company. And I started recording this and I had to stop because I was looking at the pages and I was reading stuff that was different from what I read the first time around. And I was confused and I was trying to figure it out and I decided to just stop and figure out what was going on. And I'm going to tell you later what the problem was. Um, I should say, first of all, I'm not uh, uh, an idiot. Uh, I have a PhD in religion, a master's degree in South Asia studies, a bachelor's degree in computer engineering. Uh, I worked both in academia teaching uh, Sanskrit and Buddhism, and I worked in um, uh, engineering also. Um, so you know, I, I, I'm not I'm not by any means a moron, and the lymphoma hasn't impacted my cognitive uh, abilities long term. On the sp spur of the moment, there were times where I was speaking in in tongues, but um, it hasn't left any uh, lasting impact. So I, I I'm there mentally. I mean, I'm able to process information. Um, for the most part, I've been satisfied with our insurance, though sometimes there's been hiccups and surprises, and I'll that uh, that will probably be part of a different video uh, eventually. Um, but today they sent me a card for rewards, and there these are health rewards, and in theory it's a good thing because they want to encourage certain behaviors. So. Every workshop that you attend, you're going to get so much money. If you get the flu shot, you're going to get so much money. If you get colorectal cancer screening, you're going to, going to get so much money. And those are all good things. Um, the problem is when you want to redeem that money, that things start to get complicated. Uh, at first, my wife looked at it, and she didn't realize that the card was sent to me, not to her. So she was <laughs> reading the fine print, and she was saying, oh, I think that it's not worth it because you have to prove this and that and then and then. And then I said, hold on, I'm going to, you know, read about it and try to figure out how it works. And then I'm, you know, we're going to see whether it's worth it or not. Um, because the rewards seem fine to me. So if you go to their web page, and um, so those are the health awards for 2022. And actually, that's the problem I had earlier, is that for some reason, earlier I ran into the health awards for 2021, which are different than these, actually. So the health awards you can get can change from year to year. Um, and I watched the, the little videos, uh, and... Uh, it, they were not very useful to solve my problems. So you see here the health activity. You get $10 per workshop, $25 for a flu shot, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and last year, which unfortunately nobody told us, there was a $75 for if you were completely vaccinated for COVID. But they've removed it from 2022, so I guess they don't care anymore. Uh, we were both my wife and I fully vaccinated for COVID, but nobody told us. Um, and they didn't know. I, I find that bizarre because we're in databases where I'm in the Johns Hopkins database for one thing. And I think my state knows I'm fully vaccinated. Why does Giha doesn't, doesn't know that? I have no idea. Um, it, again, it seems like the, the whole thing seems nonsense to me, and this is part of the nonsense pie that they don't know that I'm fully vaccinated. They're gonna they're gonna claim stupidity about that for some nonsensical reason. Um, so th these are the the rates, and I had calculated for. And unfortunately, the page I found earlier was last year's page, so I was looking at the flu shot. Oh yeah, I got the flu shot. I got colorectal cancer screening, which was. Uh, Cologuard, but there's no little fine print here about Cologuard. It's you get the uh, oh they put in parentheses now colonoscopy. I think yeah, that's that's the difference. I, I f I'm finding uh, reasons now because in the previous page it was it was saying colonoscopy or in the house fifty dollars. Now it just says colonoscopy, and if and if you do it in the house with Cologuard, they I guess t give you ten dollars. Very nice. Um, and, uh, I had the, the COVID vaccine. So that was a $75 that you don't sell on this page because it was only the last year. Um, 
so and then I went into my account and I saw like you can see here ten dollars uh, which was puzzling to me but now I kind of realize that if it's color guard it reimburse you less than if uh, you do a colonoscopy um, which I think is nonsense but you see that another thing I wanted to tell you is that you, they, you have the MD live telehealth visit and they give you fifty dollars if you have that visit I don't know how many times you can do a visit like that per year but I've used MD Live and they oh is this great thing where you get the doctor online and you can have service and that I found it utterly useless. Um, I've used it a, a, a few times last year or the year before. I don't remember which year it was. It might have been 2020 more than 2021. I found it useless. the The lady was just talking to me and she was saying, "Go to the emergency. Go to the emergency." It's like if you have the little sniffles and you have a cold, then maybe it, it can be useful for you. If you have something more complicated, forget about it. Tele These telehealth visits are complete nonsense. I, I'm not planning to have any more, and I'm not planning to have more just for the sake of racking up money. Um, health risk assessment, I don't know what that is. Uh, and then you have participation in targeted health program, and it, in parentheses they say by invitation. I've never been invited to any of that stuff, so I don't know when the invitation are sent to people. Um, and then there's spending rewards. So you get rewards, they're put into an account, they give you a card, the card can take money out of the account, but then you you need to know how to, to use it. And um, he, here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the message that I have read. CUV card use verification reminder. IRS rules state that all card transactions must be verified for eligible expenses. When card transactions can't be verified automatically, and look at the at the comma there or the the apostrophe that looks like a question mark that tells you right there that you, you're dealing with quality. When card transactions can be verified automatically, you will receive the card use verification CUV request and you will need to submit an itemized receipt to verify the card transaction. You must have a receipt of the or an explanation of benefit EOB from your insurance carrier for each card transaction that is submitted against your account. The IRS required that the receipts that you submit to verify a card transaction must include five pieces of information, the patient's name, the provider's name, the date of service, the type of service, and the cost. And you'll notice again the apostrophes are replaced by question marks. At least they're consistent in their stupidity, but here we are. Please note, credit card receipts or cash checks typically do not provide the required five pieces of information and will not meet the criteria for card use verification. So I read this and I, I'm afraid now. It's like, when, in which cases will I need to use this card use vis verification, what do I need to submit to, you know, they require these pieces of information, um, but, you know, are they going to be an explanation of benefit? Um, are they going to be on the receipt? This, uh, this information is, is sent to you through the back door and they do not contextualize it. What I would like here is to have um, a kind of skit where they they show you how how it happens. How do you, you know, you do this thing and you're not going to need the number or you do that thing and then, yes, you're going to need a number to satisfy the IRS. So the rewards must be, the rewards, when you use a reward, you must use it on an eligible pur purchase. And some people at this point are going to say, oh, well, but you just call them, you know, and talk to a CSR to try to figure out you know, how things are supposed to work. Uh, that's more nonsense for multiple reasons. First of all, getting a CSR on the phone that will understand your problem and explain it intelligently is like trying to find a unicorn. Really. Uh, when I have to call a CSR, I usually expect that I'm going to get um, the place idiot uh, and that is going to read a script and I'm not going to get satisfaction. Uh, most of the time when you call them, 
And even for in insurance purposes, they're going to want you to reset your watch, reset your phone, reset your this, reset your desk, re rebuild your house, remarry your wife, in the hope that one of these things are going to fix the problem. They're not terribly bright. They follow a script and that's it. Uh, my time is not free. I cannot be on the phone with somebody all day long for them to try to figure out in the manual where the, the you know, what the answer is to my problem. Um, so I don't want to call a CSR. Really, this information that I'm seeking right now should be on the website and should be patently clear to everyone who sees it. So my idea would be to have skits. You have a skit with somebody who does a transaction where the, the number is not required. I understand that you cannot tell everybody, you know, every specific situation, but there are general buckets in which they fall. So you do a skit where the person doesn't need a verification number. You do a skit where the person needs it. And that should clarify things. Because I, I told you I'm not an idiot. And I'm wondering, you know, how many people just see that arrive in the mail, start reading the fine print and just toss it in the garbage because you have things like, you know, oh, you, now you need to justify your use of the money. So you need to have these receipts and these things and that thing. And they look at that and they start thinking it's just going to be a, a whole lot of, of nonsense uh, to handle. Uh, you know, a lot of of people, I'm re relatively young with my cancer. Um, I mean, I'm not the youngest. There are people that are younger than me. But for PCNS lymphoma, I'm relatively young. A lot of patients are older than I am. And a lot of people on in the insurance and people who need insurance, who use it actively, are older than I am. Um, and then they they look at the instructions and some of them may not be able to understand them even. Um and I'm going to tell you exactly how they can fix this. Uh, the rewards that you get from doing the things that they want you to do should not be subject to any kind of eligibility criterion. You do the workshop, you get your money. You get you get your flu shot, you get your money. You go to have your screening for colorectal cancer, and it should be $50 also for Cologuard. Uh, you get your money. And then what you do with your money is your business. Right now, they want you to put the money back into healthcare, but no, it should be just your business. You want to, to buy a PS5, then buy a PS5. And I have to wonder about the costs that we're paying now to manage the program, because now there have to be people at the other end that verify that all your expenses are uh, they're justified and you, the, you have the number that they, you have to get from the IRS and people have to verify those things. This is complete nonsense you should be able to do whatever you want with the rewards that you get if you decide to, to take 10 workshops and then go stuff your face with a burger it should be your choice um i realize that it's that then you may think that it's nonsense because you just take in workshops on diet and then you go stuff your face with a burger. But the alternative is even worse. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure people right now are just looking at that and tossing it in the garbage or they're putting it somewhere and forgetting about it because of those stupid rules that they made up. And I'm not going to go... I'm not going to pursue this any further. I, I think this is it. This this is dead. This is right there. This is dead on arrival. I have ten dollars in my in in my account. Uh, even though I've done last year things that should have triggered more money, uh, you know. That that's the other thing. It's like they conveniently forget to put money into your account, and then you have to complain every time something happens. You have to complain to them that they didn't put the money in your account. I have other things to do with my life. The companies these days, they think that if they have a CSR line, they're fine. I don't think that's how it should work at all. I think they should put the cards on the table from the get-go. And that's the problem with, with the insurance companies. And I think this is part of, I think I'm very cynical about every the companies in particular. 
Uh, and I think this is part of the game. Like they're trying to. The, oh, look at look! We have this plan. There's this plan that you can get on. We're going to reward you for good behavior. But then when they put it in execution, execution, there's all those conditions and rules and this and that. And and then in the end, it's like, why am I gonna get on that? nonsensical system and fight with people to get my money if if it's a small amount of money and they say oh you can carry it's you have a limit a yearly limit i think of 250 dollars and it can carry over from year to year uh but really it doesn't feel like it's gonna materialize and if it doesn't materialize why am i going to fight with all those people for something that doesn't materialize and doesn't benefit me directly uh in this country in the u.s i think our our healthcare benefit um programs are very half-hearted you know there's the basic insurance that pays for this 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 and that and usually that works pretty well though i've had problems and i'm gonna have videos about that but then there's the, those auxiliary programs like, you know, health rewards and you do this and you get this benefit. And those things come with such a ton of conditions that they stink. If you work in the healthcare industry and, and you see this video, you probably stink too. I do not like you. It's that bad. Um... So yeah, I'm going to cease ranting now. Um, I was not planning on doing this video, but then the insurance company decided to send me nonsense, so I felt compelled to do it while it's fresh. Um, so I'm going to try to spend more time on positive videos like uh, Crank Your Damn Jets to 11. I should be able to do uh, a few of those uh, soon. So... Um, for now, I'll say goodbye and see you next episode. Oh, and I have a little addendum. I talked to my wife just now and explained what I discovered while I was recording this. And uh, we've both decided that our cards are going in the trash. Bravo, insurance company.